hunting strategies often need to change throughout the hunting season for hunters to be successful. Food sources and preferred bedding can change quickly. Adjusting your hunting strategy based on the time of year and finding fresh sign, well that can be key to punch and attack. To learn more about hunting strategies and deer biology, make sure you subscribe to the Growing Deer channel. Several weeks ago, during late September, pro staffer Danny Noggle was hunting near a hidey hole food plot that he had planted with green cover seed hidey hole blend. There were also several large white oaks in the area and they were dropping acorns. During this time of year, deer are typically still in that food cover pattern and hunting near two attractive food sources, well, it resulted in Danny tagging a nice doe. Danny also knew there was a nice eight point buck in the area. He had received several Moultrie mobile images just up the ridge of this nice buck, likely feeding on acorns. And a few days after Danny had tagged his doe, the buck showed up at another little hidey hole food plot just up the ridge. On this property that Danny hunts, there's a big terrain feature on the southern side of the timber. It's a pretty steep bluff. And that runs along the south side, but as you get into the timber, there's a long ridge that primarily runs east and west. And on that west end, that ridge kind of dog legs and kind of runs to the northwest. This creates a great little travel corridor up on top of this ridge and a bottleneck that deer love to travel, especially during the pre-rut. Danny also knew from past hunts, him and some of his buddies have hunted this property and had some great encounters with bucks running this ridge. It's a great travel corridor. During mid-October, Danny decided to take the stand down that he had shot the doe from and move it up the ridge and hunt this travel corridor. He found a heck of a rub line running across that ridge and that was great sign. Finding one or two rubs in the timber, and that means a buck may be cruising through and stop and make a rub, but when you find a rub line like this, man, you know this is a travel corridor. There's definitely multiple bucks running through here and communicating, not only with sight, seeing that fresh rub, but with scent. They're leaving scent on those rubs and they're communicating. This can be great sign to hunt over during the pre-rut. Danny had positioned his stand on the downhill side of this rub line, this travel corridor, and he had to wait for an east northeast wind, which doesn't happen a lot here in Southern Missouri, but he was patient and during the days he was waiting for favorable conditions, he was shooting his morel target, preparing for when the conditions were favorable. During the afternoon of October 26, Danny got an image on his Moultrie Mobile, and that nice eight pointer was feeding in that hidey hole food plot just up the ridge from where he had recently hung a stand. The next morning, October 27th, about 10:15, a doe walked by his Moultrie Mobile, and behind that doe was that nice eight-point buck. During this time in October, the pre-rut is ramping up, and that means there's a small percentage of does that are going to become receptive, compared to the peak of the rut when the largest percent of does in the area are receptive. When a buck finds a receptive doe, he's going to tend her for about 24 to 36 hours, and during that time, they'll breed and they likely won't move far. Danny was thrilled to see this sequence of images because the following morning, there was an east-northeast wind forecast, and Danny wasn't scheduled to work at the fire station. Well, it's the morning of October 28th here in Southwest Missouri, and I'm getting ready to go ahead into a stand that I just hung a couple weeks ago. Um, conditions are right this morning to slip in there. Uh, really expecting the bucks to be cruising. I've got the rattle antlers packed with me. I've got a grunt call. I'm gonna sit for a good long while today and uh, hopefully we can catch some deer moving. So let's get out here and head that way and see what we can find. It was very early when Danny spotted movement 
in the timber heading his way. just punched my buck tag it's just a little bit after 7 30 right now but just as soon as day broke I had a buck come down I was getting ready to do my pre-interview I looked down and he walked straight into me to about five ten yards startled on me in the tree he started to skirt up around me and I made a shot it was a touchback but I watched him go down just 50 yards up the hillside from him the dead meat ate him up in no time um, but I'm sitting on a little pinch point on a saddle or right off the edge of a ridge top uh, there's a ton of buck rubs in here, a ton of deer sign. We knew they were using this area. Bradley and I have kind of talked about this spot the past couple of years, and he's killed the deer off of it two years ago. So it's the pre-rut. You never know what's going to happen, and this morning it happened fast. Got to holler at Bradley, see if he's awake this morning. He might have slept in. I've texted him a couple times and got nothing. Uh, yeah, did you sleep in? Uh, yep. You lazy bum. Is it a good one? He's he's one of them. I think he's a tall eight. Really? Yeah. But Have you already found him and everything? I'm looking at him laying dead. He ran up about 50 yards and fell over. Once Danny's buddy Sean arrived to help him film and recover the deer, Danny climbed down and was excited to walk up and get his hands on a nice set of antlers. Growing Deer is brought to you by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Also by Green Cover Food Plots, Winchester, Lacrosse Footwear, Moultrie Mobile, Fleet Outdoor Apparel, Morel Targets, RTP Outdoors, Fourth Arrow, Hunt Stand, Scorpion Venom Archery, Case IH Tractors, Ward Laboratories, Burris Optics, National Land Realty, G5 Broadheads. Prime bows and redneck hunting blood. Oh, okay, there's a bunch of blood in there. Look at all that blood. So it's not really a track job. We watched him die from the tree stand, so I'm just gonna walk up there and find him. But there's blood all over. Arrows covered in blood. The dead meat ate him up. Was that 40 yards? <laughs> Maybe. He got some good, good length on him. Good twos, good threes. Brows are decent. Some fresh, fresh rubbing. That's pretty good luck. Nice job, Danny, on a successful pre-rut hunt. Danny's hunt is a great example for us all. 
He understood the terrain features, used that bottleneck, how that bluff kind of pushed deer to the north. He hunted right on the edge of that travel corridor, that long ridge that he knew from past experience and sign that bucks were traveling. He waited until the conditions were favorable and the time of year he believed deer were gonna be most active in that area. He was patient, he put everything together, and he tagged a nice buck. Obviously, this ridge is a great travel corridor, but there's a little more to the story. This part, Danny didn't know at the time, but right before Danny harvested this buck, that buck walked by a Moultrie Mobile to the east of Danny. And wouldn't you know it, he was with a doe a little after seven. That buck traveled east, hit another camera, heading straight towards Danny just a few minutes before he harvested him. This was a great example of how this buck was traveling this ridge during the pre-rut. It's very likely this buck just happened to break away from this doe from that first image to the time he reached Danny. And he was taking that travel corridor looking for another receptive doe. This is a great illustration of buck movement during the pre-rut. They're on their feet more looking for those receptive does and they tend to be more active during daylight than other times of the year. They're gonna be on their feet more. That means hunters can have some great encounters. Hunting sign like scrapes and rubs and travel corridors can be very effective during this pre-rut. But as more and more does become receptive and we get closer and are hunting that peak of the rut, our hunting strategies may need to adjust. We'll be sharing about our hunting strategies during the rut on our channel and our social media pages almost daily. So make sure you subscribe to Growing Deer, check out our social media and stay tuned. And we'll be sharing a lot more information about hunting strategies and deer biology as we reach the rut. It's a great time to get outside and enjoy creation. Whether you're in a deer stand or just out for a walk enjoying the fall colors, I hope you slow down this week Listen to what the creator is saying to you and the purpose he has for your life. Thanks for watching Growing Deer. Is that a deer? Is that a deer? Is that a deer?